So, the Ubisoft Conference. How do we explain the Ubisoft Conference? Um, stuff going really long. Uh, a lot of drugs for some reason. That is true. There were a surprising amount of drugs going on. Uh, drugs and people dying i've noticed and people running yeah and running a lot of running uh yeah i'd say that i think of all things uh we should really just go back and talk about everything from the start so skipping just dance 2017 because uh we all know that the best part <laughs> of that reveal was the giraffe um <laughs> Just Dance 2017 is going to be Just Dance. We all know that. So it's just going to be a good time to be... If you're a Just Dance mm -hmm. fan, then you're going to get your money's worth out of it, probably. Uh, I'm going to leave the E3 post-show on right now for you guys to enjoy. Uh, enjoy Meg Turney talking. Yeah. Uh, enjoy that quarter circle punch, that Hadouken necklace she's wearing. Uh, the next thing they revealed was a whole lot of details about South Park, the fractured butthole. Are you going to play it? <laughs> Probably eventually. I played the Stick of Truth and really liked it, despite never watching uh, South Park. Yeah, I... And the, I, Go ahead. This one uh, just seems to be improving on uh, the first one. Yeah. Um, I think it's really nice that they finally have made a, like a franchise that they're confident with. Uh, mm -hmm. making games with because for a long time they were trying to make South Park games that just weren't clicking right like they weren't they weren't truly in the essence of South Park like they were f making fun of like a single in joke from an episode or something and it feels yeah. like the concept that they're going with now the idea of an RPG in this sense allows them to create essentially like a whole entire season of content worth in mm -hmm. one game and it allows them to be like really creative with what they talk about like for like an entire minute in the trailer they were slamming dc comics and marvel <laughs> yeah i think that was amazing like that's the kind of humor i enjoy and even though i'm not like a tv person i would totally play south park games just to have that kind of humor to enjoy i would totally i would totally play south park the fractured butthole I'm going to say it like that from now on, because I used to try to, like, dance around it, but I feel like <laughs> I need to say it in its proper way now in order for it to, like, really convey the amount of silliness that it is, because it looks like <laughs> it looks like the main character you are, like, I, I can't tell if it's right or wrong right now. The character you are is a continuation of who you were in the Stick of Truth, and Cartman doesn't remember who the hell you are. <laughs> <laughs> well... That makes sense if you play Stick of Truth. I guess, yeah. Uh, the next thing that they showed off was uh, Star Trek. Star Trek Bridge Crew, the first VR title. Uh, f the first Star Trek VR title, at the very least, is what they explained it. Uh, it didn't seem to note a lot of uh, interest from people, apparently, as I'm looking in this hashtag battle. Not a whole lot of people got an interest in the Star Trek VR game. I think it'll be interesting to see uh, in the future. I think it's also, there wasn't a lot of um, stuff shown for it. Like, Yeah, we only most... really got a brief glimpse in what we think is probably alpha footage. Yeah, uh, it was mostly just like actors from the various seasons just kind of Oh, hey, Nebelian showed out. up on the stream. How about that? Um, anyways, yeah, it's... I think the fact is is that we can't exactly explain we can't we can't understand how good the game is unless we try it and none of us have VR experience. Mm -hmm. And I would love to have VR experience for this cuz I would love to try a Star Trek VR game cuz my parents are Trekkies and I think that they would absolutely adore being in like a Starfleet ship controlling things. I think they would love it. Um, yeah, the other one was, uh, Eagle Flight, I think it was called. 
which is the uh, the indie VR title. Uh, yeah. They showed off capture the capture the capture the bunny or something. Basically, capture the flag. <laughs> yeah. Game type. Uh, and the entire game looks like a VR dogfight game, which I think is interesting. And uh, the game reminds me a lot of Tokyo Jungle, where nature has just completely taken over the area again. I love that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Tokyo Jungle is a great game, by the way. Check that out. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think both of those VR games were very good, ex uh, very good examples of where VR is going. Like, we're getting to the point where we can create VR simulators of shows that we've been watching from the '80s. And yeah. like Star Trek is like a a very heavy example of that. Like people can start making simulators of beloved games now and be able to have like a real experience with it without, you know, tearing apart their house and creating it from scratch. Uh we also got a gameplay trailer for For Honor. You got to see some campaign gameplay? Uh, what did you think of it? Um, I don't know. It looks interesting, but I don't, like, the only reason I think I really liked Tyrell Warriors was because I like Zelda. Like, I feel, because I don't really try comboing, I just literally mash buttons. Yeah. So... I, um, I feel like that would get boring if I don't have, like, that type of gameplay it gets boring if I, to me if I don't have, like, the set pieces and characters that I recognize and like. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's not a whole lot like um, Dynasty Warriors. It's very close, I've noticed. Like, there's a lot of enemies for you to kill and everything, but you don't have to kill them all. Like, that's not the focus. Um, it seems very interesting i'd want to play more of it like i'd want to give it a shot because i like the idea of mm -hmm. being able to like dynamically change your stance and everything mm -hmm. uh along with fighting enemies and the idea of doing that in multiplayer seems really tense and like strategic in a way like it seems yeah. like it seems like combat is intentionally <laughs> slow with uh, just the right amount of action pacing to it like i think i want to see how this game evolves like i want to see how the multiplayer looks uh once it comes out because i think i think the game is, is shaping up to be like that a really nice kind of like game you play to screw around with your friends kind of deal <laughs> where you and your friends just go around uh creating like fight clubs or something in the middle of matches like that kind of mm -hmm. thing i think it would be interesting so yeah i think for honor is looking pretty nice yeah we also got uh the sequel to grow home uh grow up <laughs> a very brief look. We are no longer on a flat land trying to grow a single plant. We are now apparently growing an entire world, it looks. Because we got to see an entire spherical planet with a bunch of plants and stems growing out of it. Uh... Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> I'd say. I don't know. I don't really... I didn't really enjoy Grow Home. Uh... But, I thought it was fun, but not something that I wanted more of. Yeah, I mean the idea is I, the idea is pretty interesting. I have to say, like it's kind of like one of those um, one of those exploration based kind of games. I yeah. think I think expanding on that by making you explore an entire world is a good idea. So I think I think what they I think their heart is in the right place with this sequel, but uh, it's not something I'm very interested in. Uh, next up was Trials of the Blood Dragon, which, uh, is a kind of a spin-off tie-in whatever thing based on, uh, it's an expansion of Trials, Trials Fusion in particular, uh, based around the 80s style callbacks to, um, uh, Far Cry Blood Dragon. Uh, it looks like they're adding a lot more crazy stuff. That's all I can really say about it. That seems to be the trend with Trials Fusion, is that they just keep making it more and more crazy. Yeah, I've never played Trials or 
Blood Dragon, so I can't really comment or don't really want to comment. Yeah. Uh, they're showing a trailer about how Xbox Play Anywhere will work, and I'm kind of concerned. <laughs> because a mom was just like, okay, it's, okay, honey, you can watch. You can watch the video. You can watch your shows here. I'm yeah. going to go into my room and play things on my own. Yeah. It's kind of scary, but again, I'm I'm a fan of play anywhere. Anyways, yeah, Trials of the Blood Dragon looks interesting. I haven't I've never played Trials Fusion. I played Evolution and Trials HD, but I don't know. More more of more of a really silly game like that is all the better. Uh, next up, they showed off some gameplay for Watch Dogs 2. And I think that... Looks way think, better than the first. Yeah, I think that's. I think that was the showstopper, really, was Watch Dogs 2. We got to see Watch Dogs 2, and we got to get a better, a better understanding of what they're going to do with Watch Dogs. Instead of making it more um, complacently gloomy, like the first one uh, was, they're aiming to make it more lighthearted and silly. Like, they're showing... The, the correct side of a hacking group, really. Instead yeah. of it using be instead of it being used for one guy's benefit, it's being used for the benefit of everyone through a group of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I think that's a good approach. Um, I reacted a little too much on the fact that they had stealth jazz music playing and Oda <laughs> Joy started playing as well, but I think that's I think that's supposed to set the mood for everyone to understand that this is not going to be Watch Dogs one. This is going to be a better oh, approach Nintendo's to what. Oh, Nintendo's on the yeah. thing. Yeah, it, that Watch Dogs two is going to be a better approach to what Watch Dogs one should have been. And uh, even though it's yeah. probably going to get a graphics downgrade, I still want to play Watch Dogs two because it I looks more fun and interesting to me. I don't exactly mind the downgrade because I don't. I don't think the Watch Dogs one looked bad. Like it was really dark and gritty, but yeah this one probably won't be but just like i don't think it really looked bad just not as good as it originally did Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's right. Um, and to close it off, they showed off a new IP, uh, Steep, which is an extreme snow sports, um, open world MMO style multiplayer game. I have an interest in those kinds of games. I would probably play it. Uh, uh I'm not the biggest multiplayer yeah. person, so... It, it, this is this is more meant for people who want to play games with friends, I suppose, and uh, that's perfectly fine for games like that to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of concerned about the amount of content. That's like the only concern I have. It looks like there will be enough for you to hang out with your friends and play it for a short while, but there needs to be a continuous stream of content, maybe add-on challenges or uh, new ways to play, maybe snowmobile races or some shit later down the line. There needs to be more than yeah. what we saw uh, for it to seem like it's a worthwhile uh, premium purchase. The game looks this fun, is though. This is coming in December. Which, yeah, uh, that is true. Both this and Watch Dogs were announced this year and launching by the end of the year, which I think is kind of interesting because a lot of Ubisoft titles, besides like Assassin's Creed maybe, have like these long hype periods of sometimes like two years or three years yeah so um, I, I think it's kind of interesting they're stopping that because um i think a lot of their games have kind of been more negatively received just because the hype was so high and then yeah that is true it's nice to see them take a break from all of the major ips we've seen um i was yeah. i was in particular really surprised that they haven't started working on a new Assassin's Creed. They didn't reveal that they're working on a new Assassin's Creed, which I thought it was... Oh, Runbo 3DS confirmed. Yeah, Runbo 3DS, yeah. <laughs> Runbo with a campaign, I should add. Like a story about single player. Um, but yeah, I was really impressed that they didn't even say anything about a new Assassin's Creed game. They 
talked about the games that we already yeah. knew about, along with a couple of new indie games and a new IP, uh, which is a really different perspective of Ubisoft. Because for the past two or three years, they've been talking about the same thing we've always been familiar with. Splinter Cell, uh, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, um, Ghost Recon. Just yeah, Just Dance, of course. Like we, we, They've all been familiar with games we all know about. So it's interesting to see them take such a, a tame, nice look back approach and show off games that are more important than the games that they know will print them money. Uh, mm -hmm. They did show games that will print them money because they're not idiots, but they did take some time to focus on the games that uh, people might be interested in, the new experiences. And I think Run that. Does... Yeah, Runbo is a new 3DS title. Yeah. Uh, and Shante confirmed. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say on it. Um, what would you rate the Ubisoft conference? Um, I'd give it a solid 7. Like, so out of 10, I'd say probably 6, maybe 7 at the highest. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a whole lot, and the pacing was way off, as is Ubisoft's trend. But there wasn't mm -hmm. anything I thought negatively about them. I thought everything was all right. Like nothing really blew yeah. me away, and the execution of their commentary and everything was like deliberate. Like they wanted to take the time to tell people why you should be paying attention to things like this. Um, mm -hmm. Like they had some time with the interview of South Park because maybe people were turned off from the idea of playing the Stick of Truth because it was a South Park game. Uh, and they yeah. wanted people to experience it firsthand with uh, the, the fractured butthole. Um, that's something that I think that is an interesting approach. So I think they did pretty well with keeping a very neutral approach to everything. Like, they wanted people to experience everything as it was, as a new experience. Like, they wanted people to try and experiment with new things to show new concepts. And I think for the most part it worked. A lot of the games I saw I was very interested in. Um, but the mm -hmm. pacing was just way off that it was distracting sometimes. Um, especially yeah. when they were talking about the Assassin's Creed movie. Uh, and uh, at some points the pacing was like incredibly fast where we didn't get a full idea of it. And then they'd go right back into something really slow. Mm. Um, but yeah, again, I don't have any issue with the game or with the with the conference i thought it was all all right yeah yeah i agree so yeah ubisoft's conference that was that was an interesting one that was a good time mm -hmm. i i don't regret watching it at all yeah same but we have one more conference today uh and that'll be in uh, three hours. Yeah, uh, just the under Sony three conference. hours. The Sony conference. Uh, we'll have our pre-show hopefully thirty minutes before the conference starts. Uh, <laughs> but we are going to take a small intermission, and by small I mean a two-hour intermission. Uh, and when we return, we will have a third guest joining us. Uh, for the final conference of today, and uh, then we'll do our post day. Uh, sh uh, discussion and that'll be it for today so uh, yeah we will be back uh, at 5.30 be here to uh, enjoy the Sony conference with us uh, we'll see you there thank you Connor for joining us yay All right. we will see you